Yeah, we're on. All right, so I did my indie lab about Beyblades. So if you don't know what Beyblades are, they're like these, practically they're just tops that come with interchangeable parts that you just pretty much, there's an arena and you have these little launcher gizmos that you hook on and then you rip them. So you just pull the string, comes out and the Beyblade comes spinning down and then in arena they just hit each other a lot. So my purpose of my indie lab was to figure out what design of Beyblades would be the best so all these different Beyblades have these different parts to them. All of them, they have metal or plastic, they have tips, they have bottoms, they have all these little parts. So here are the parts that I made. So first is like the, the face of it, which is like a little plastic screw that holds the clear wheel and metal wheel together. Oh, and the track as well. They're just this, they have a little face on them that represent what they are or it's so like this guy was like a Spartan, and so they all have names. They're all based on cost of, uh, constellations. Uh, next is like the plastic wheel, which is this little part. This really doesn't affect much when they hit each other, but except for this one that I used called uh, the Gravity Destroyer, because that's what it was called. Um, this thing, or I'll get into this guy later, but uh, the plastic can switch, and then it would be a plastic on metal collision instead of metal on metal. And then you have your metal wheel, which is what I've tried to focus on, was this metal wheel. This is like when the two Beyblades, they hit each other, and this is what matters the most, kind of like the way the mass is distributed around the outside or more to the center, and then the grooves and indents they all have. And then you come with the clear, uh, the track actually, which this thing, this thing can be crazy. Like they have one that had like ball bearings that go out way to the side. Some of them have spinning parts in it that are like wheels. Some of them have like wings on it. They're all crazy, but I try to stick with the same type of one, which is like makes it a little tall, and that's it. And then the bottom. The bottom is probably the second most thing that changes the way that Beyblade works, because it can either be like this one, very flat and low, and like a lot of friction on this one, or they can be like uh, this one, which is kind of more of a tip. But they can also be like metal wheels that roll as they spin, which are really weird. But uh, I try to keep everything consistent with all my Beyblades. So again, with the parts, the way it works is that there's these, uh, this is called like the launcher and this is the rip tie. Uh, the way it is that you open it, it's got this wheel and it's got like a stopper that stops the wheel from spinning. So as you see here, it has these two little things where within the Beyblade they hook onto and then that's just how they hand, that's how they hand stay on there. <laughs> but uh, pretty much what you do, the teeth of this line up exactly with the wheel there and then when you pull it it spins it the way it spins it probably this way and then when the thing the the rip tie is finished out of it this little lever will stop it and then that will release the beyblade because it's got these little curved parts so as the beyblade's spinning up it will spin and ramp off those curved parts and down into the arena so there's four types of beyblades that i figured out or i made and researched you have your attack type, which is this one. And so pretty much the attack type, they want to knock the other Beyblade out or down. Uh, what you want with a, uh, an attack Beyblade is to have it to be really, really heavy, if you can, which kind of stinks because all the Doc's uh, attacking Beyblades were kind of not that heavy, which is fine. Um, <laughs> but nice the reason you. like you want it to be down there because the kind of uh, really, he really heavy is because like the gravitational torque would wants to keep down and then you want it to be short as well. So the whole center of mass is lower to the stadium and you also want it to try to have a lot of friction so that it will have a lot of energy to hit the Beyblades and try to knock it out. Also you want protrusions on most attack Beyblades which this one which I think was the coolest one by looking at it and also uh, what I did my research on. It has little protrusions but these will come to effect later. Defense types which are the one I took apart real quick. These ones, they want to be, again, low to the ground, and they want to take, be able to take a lot of recoil, and so they just want to win by not being able to knock out. So the attack guys will hit them, and they just want to stay spinning, pretty much. They, like, they can take all the hits. Stamina, which are which was this guy, the Thermal li Lyser? I forget what this guy's name is, but uh, this one will outspin all the other blades. Like it will, if you just leave it alone in the stadium, this one will spin faster than all the other ones. And I'll get into why and all that later. Then balance, you take the two parts of like what makes an attack and defense blade, they made uh, really good, and you combine them with depending on the metal wheel or the track or the tip, and that would make you 
just a combo, which you think would be good, but then it's also not good because they're not excelling in the field, they're just good at it. And so, as I said, I showed you my Beyblades. I had, the, my attacking was the attack Pegasus, Defense, Gravity Destroyer, Stamina, oh wait, this is Stamina, Thermal Lacerda, this one is Gravity Destroyer, and then Balance was Poison Serpent. So, I, my kind of purpose, I didn't know what to do, really, to figure out what the Beyblades were the best, so I kind of, I looked up, a, I read a lot of research on Beyblades and what makes them good. So, I pretty much thought I, I would statistically just make sure that what would be cool. So, my, I don't have a lot of data, but statistically, what came out on top was stamina, and I'll say why, but pretty much I had to try to keep the force applied constant because sometimes you could just go and make a spin off, but then you could rip it really hard and it would be a lot more spin to it. So, I took a force sensor and me and my dad tried to get used to spinning it at the same force and we just practiced and practiced and then we would have them battle against each other with semi the same force and then see what would outlast or who would win which is the kind of the it's a really bad way of doing it there's a lot of error probably because not going to keep it that way but yeah okay so the, yes. can you go back to that previous slide for just a second yep does that represent that many battles, every part of that array is a battle? Yes. So, first time, I, this is all This is all attack versus my attack win versus defense. So defense wins, is one battle, another battle, another battle, another battle, and then we did like a lot of battles. So we sat there and like watched a, what we watched? We watched a movie while I was just doing it, so. Um, so that's the rankings, and the ranks, I had stamina, defense, balance, and attack. That's what, I thought that defense was going to win just because I thought defensively it could be not be knocked out and it would spin the longest, but stamina came out on top. So the losers. This is where I, I kind of did my most lab about is why all these were sucky and then why the stamina was the best. That's what I did a lot of research. So pretty much the attack. This guy has a lot of wings and with attack type of Beyblades, you want to be able to hit with these wings that are protrusions that will hit it and make it fly out the arena or anything. This one has very, very little protrusions, which it's more of like a circular Beyblade, even though it has little openings. It just, it doesn't have enough way to hit it. So like, it's also very lightweight and vulnerable parts. So in that they are very little angular momentum just cause how, uh, how much it weighed. So this one just really sucked, but uh, it, it, the forms the, the attack would hit each other, they gave them their advantage, but this one was the best one I had because it had the biggest protrusions of the ones, but that's why I went, that one sucked. Then the next one was the balance, because this one, it looks really cool because it's got all these like kind of like constant protrusions, but this one has like 15 of these, but they're all, I think, four millimeters apart. Uh, yeah, they're four millimeters apart from like their biggest angle. And so, this really one sucks because it keeps getting hit a lot. Uh, it would get, get hit a lot, but it would take a lot of recoil because since it's so flat, Elder Beyblades can just hit it and it's just going to be swinging back. Because like if you hit against something that's curved, it would be able to like, kind of slide off. But the outside of this is really flat, so it would take a lot of its own recoil and just uh, stop spinning very quickly. Um, yeah. Then the next one, which was the one I thought was going to do the best, was the defense one. So this one, very special. It can be, this, this one's really special because this metal wheel, you can turn it like uh, this, and so that these plastic things will cover these holes, or you can have it that these plastic things are like above the metal, uh, like this, sorry. So then it would be more plastic on metal collisions. So I just kept it in like the form where it was more still metal on metal, but this one, this one really, I did a lot of research in that. This one is actually more of an attacking type because I classified all the metal wheels and this one was de classified as defense, but it was actually an attacking Beyblade, what people said. And so the reason is because like it had a lot of weight on the outside and that it wanted it wanted to keep spinning and dipping down like this. It, could, it would go like, it kind of would wobble within the arena because cause there's a lot of weight on the different parts and then also this. So it would want to kick up the Beyblade. So if this was fighting this one, it wanted to kick it up and like knock it up. Which the ba uh, defense Beyblades do not want to do that. They want to keep spinning and just be able to take hits. So that's why this one lost. Uh, that's pretty, and it also had a lot of recoil to itself, which also stinks because Beyblades don't want to have recoil at all, if possible.
Oh no, I skipped a slide. And so then the one I felt like the one that statistically was the winner, it like only lost two or three times was this guy. And the winner is because uh, I kind of went into the thing of centrifugal force, which you told us not to do I when we did course. like the swinging thing with the water and stuff. I tried, internet. I tried. I tried, but that's what a lot of things people said that this is why these ones were the best because it's like the way... Just use the word inertia. I know, I know, yeah. But I just wanted to describe cool. what was happening with it. So most of the weight of this metal wheel is on the outside, which is kind of what keeps it spinning and what doesn't allow other ones to spin because a lot of the defense weight is actually inside. And so it has a lot of light weight and thin metal on the outside, which will be able to take a lot of recoil. But this has two thick pieces of metal on the outside, which keep it spinning from getting hit. Um, yeah, this one had the most ma mass on the outside and like kind of the radius would if the radius of the mass, well, the mass from the center of the thing was so far out, which kept it from spinning. I, it's confusing, but also weight had a lot of effect. This one is the heaviest out of all of them as well, which I tried to make it somewhat good, like kind of constant, but this one had a lot of effect. So the heavier baits are less affected by impacts from opponents, both linear or really, so like recoil, just being hitting like this and being knocked away or being slowed down by the opponent, or spin equalized. It's like spinning, how, if it would retake the energy from this one, like the uh, like Newton's second law, that force is equal. And so like, what would take the majority of the force, sorry, third? Uh, which one would take the majority of it? And then more mass equals more angular momentum, assuming like the velocity would stay the same as well if it wasn't hit. And then the bay, like, bay bitch with more mass on the outside spin for longer, which is true. This one still span spun for longer, and are less affected by impact. Uh, mass further from the axis rotation increases the moment of inertia. So that's why this one really did so well, is just because that it was the heaviest and the mass was <coughs> distributed on the outside of it. It was also very curved, which means that it could take hits and kind of like push it on the top or the bottom of it, and it could just last the longest. So this is centrifugal force. I found this graph kind of like shows why, because the whole idea is that something's keeping you, which wants to push you away from things, but then also things want to keep you in, which is centripetal force, but centrifugal force pushes you out. And that's why it tops with the weight outside. It's pushing you out. So as you're spinning, you're wanting to keep going because like you're, something's keeping you in, but also a lot of weight is pushing you out, which is why this kept spinning the fastest. I'm not going to read all that because that would just sums up with that. So my conclusion is like, is the distribution of the mass around the bay blade is what makes the best bay blade. The centrifug uh, centrifugal force is an interesting part, which is the same way the mass on the outside. The weight matters a lot, I forgot to put that in this, but the weight matters a whole lot just because of equations. And then the stamina class is the best because of its mass uh, dis uh, distribution and smooth like outer rim. That's Thank it. You. <laughs> Much more time to have fun. <laughs> Do we have a little time? Okay. Yeah, we um, have a little bit. Uh, so you said there's like a mechanism that actually makes it spin, like the little plastic piece. Yeah, I can go back to that if you I mean, if you know what I'm talking about, that's all that matters. Yeah, I guess. I'll show like from the video as well. Are they all the same size and all of them? Yes. So, so the radius that you're applying the force to is constant as well? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, so they, they're all the same. Originally, like the first generation of Beyblade, so this is like the fourth generation of Beyblades. They used to be plastic and they used to break a lot, which sucked. That's the toys I used to play with when I was a kid, that they would break a lot. So that was like kind of the thing of the, uh, for Beyblades, the whole company, that you would break the Beyblades and go buy more parts and then you would fix it up and then that's the scam they would do. But then they switched to metal, which are really cooler and stuff. But they used to have like smaller version of these that would like have, instead of this, the middles, uh, the inside of it, it would be pinched, like the, the, sorry, this is really confusing to say, but the part where the thing hooks on, it would actually be smaller than the plastic that the old launchers would push in. So it would stick in there, you could shake it and it wouldn't come off. But then the force you would apply to this would like, once it stopped like this would stop it. And then the baby would have to shake out of it being stuck in there to do it. But yes, the radius of the applied force would stay the same because all of them are the same. I tried to make a mega launcher didn't work out because the parts I got didn't work out. But pretty much, 
I was gonna make a thing of like a gear multiplier. So like I would have like a huge gear that I would apply the force to, and that would spin the small gear that have the top of uh, the Beyblade over here on it. So like I would pull the top, make the so the same force applied to like that gear. I would apply it to a big gear, and that big gear spun the small gear, and then it would be insane of how fast it spun because it would be like a drill. Pretty much, if I made it sharp enough, it would drill through the plastic, which would really, and I, I want to do that still, even though I finished this lab, I might do it later, because it looks really cool, and I've seen it, because it sounds like a jet when it's launched, so it's really cool, yes. What might be a disadvantage of going ultra-massive? Ultra for, like, the weight? Yeah, maybe? you were saying more and more weight is better, right? Yes. Is there a point where that becomes less good? Um, yeah, I think... The way, I think if you're heavier and then you're gonna apply more spin to it, I think if, if you're very lightweight and the a force applied to the Beyblade would make it spin a lot faster, but when if it's heavier, it's not gonna spin as much if you keep the same force applied. I think to have like the best Beyblade is to have a super heavy one, but then also your amount of force you apply would make it spin as fast as other ones, but be heavier. So it, it wouldn't take hits, and then it could also take deal the hits because it would be same, spinning the same way. But like in the show that they had, they have crazy ways of like they have launchers that would like spin it up beforehand, or they used to have parts that you could spin up the tip before, and then once it that it would release and then spin it even faster, which was really cool. I you didn't have any of those, but I, I had one of those when I was a kid. That when I played against my friends, they hated it because it was really good because it would spin faster. That well, that's energy. storing an extra source of energy. That's exactly. And then once it hits, it releases and then goes. But uh, I was going to say something else. But uh, they also, like, so in the show, they, they kind of go into physics, but their physics is very, very, very flawed. And so this one guy had to beat his other kid at it. So what he did, he had to increase his speed four times to beat somehow that would beat his Beyblade. So the way he held it was upside down, and then he would have a running start he would run it and then flip it and spin it, and then that would make it go faster, which I kind of tried to do, but it didn't work because it would just go flying out the arena. So the show just kind of talks about physics, but it's not good physics. <laughs> yeah, the show is very funny to watch now. Thanks again.